Hi guys, Ben here with QDB and today I'm going to be talking about our new Flash feature. Uh, in this presentation we're going to take a quick look at what QDB on Flash is, when you might end up using QDB on Flash, we'll dig into a little bit on how it works, uh, discuss performance, and then we'll go through a demo on how to get set up with QDB on Flash and a few of the features. So what is QDB on Flash? Well, from the name, you can probably guess it enables you to extend the size of your database into Flash memory. In doing this, we're not replacing the storage medium of your in-memory database, but adding another tier of data storage to it. You may have heard about Facebook's RocksDB library, in which, uh, which is used in many popular databases such as Redis, CockroachDB, and Apache Flink. Uh, we too have integrated this into KDB and tuned it specifically for our application. One thing different about KDB compared to other databases using RocksDB is that when KDB stores your data, it is persistent to the Flash medium it is written on. Other databases using it as an extension to memory require RDB or AOF files. KDB retains its data without the need to save to disk. So when might I end up using KDB on Flash? If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're interested in one of these categories. Uh, you want a fast database, but storing all your data in memory becomes expensive. You want to be able to use all the memory available on your machine, but don't want to lose data or crash if you exceed your memory limit. If you use KDB on Flash instead of forcefully deleting memory or blocking clients when memory is full, it is evicted to the warm Flash tier where it is still accessible. Now, maybe you're allocating half of your memory towards RDB backups. With KDB on Flash, your data is continually persisted to Flash, so running heavy forking operations such as BG Save are not required. Sometimes with a really large database size, it's not always feasible to keep all the data in memory, especially if you're not already spreading your data across many shards. Even with sharding, a flash tier can provide many benefits. How does it work? Well, you can think about KDB on Flash as a cache overflow. As the memory limit for RAM is exceeded, you start to overflow data into the warm flash tier for storage. This is often based upon a least frequently used or at least recently used policy. If you're familiar with Redis or KDB, this is essentially built upon and is an extension of the max memory and eviction policies. All data is written to flash, even the hot data that is kept in RAM. This means all data is persisted and it's done similar to an F-Sync every second policy. Keep in mind, you can still use RDB and AOF policies in addition to the built-in flash persistence, but it's not needed. The flash persistence, the only time you'll need an RDB file is for maintenance tasks such as uh, version upgrades and migration. Uh, another thing to note is that both keys and values are written to flash, unlike some databases that may only write the values to flash KDB keeps both in Flash where they're persistent. Now, I don't want to go into too much time on benchmarking, but so you get an idea of performance, here's a chart of throughput showing the difference between KDB operating solely as an in-memory database and operating KDB on Flash. Go to our blog section if you want to see a full article surrounding this. As you can see, the performance remains quite good, achieving about 85% of the throughput. However, Flash enables a much larger database size. This benchmark compares databases with one kilobyte values and up to 200 million keys. It was done on an M5D 2X large, where it got 85% of the throughput with nearly a tenfold increase in the size of the database. Your performance can be tuned specific to your needs by changing the flash to RAM ratio. Oftentimes the best ratio comes from looking at what percentage of your data your application considers as hot relative to the rest. So I want to quickly re uh, demonstrate to you our KDB flash persistence as well as a working max memory policy in action. So as you can see here, we have our SSD volume mounted and for the sake of this demo, we will make a directory for the database on it. Now let's get started by installing KDB. So if you go to docs.kdb.dev, you'll see uh, several different installation methods that you can use to install. For this demo, we're going to be installing one of our dev packages through our PPA repository. So first, let's start by adding the repository. And then we can update and install KDB. Now, we're installing KDB Pro here. If you have one of our community editions installed, the KDB Pro binary is included with them as well, uh, so you can give it a try. Uh, now that we're uh, set up, uh, it does come with uh, systemd files installed, so for now we're just going to stop the, the service file. 
and we're going to go over afterwards what's needed to run uh, the KDB Flash feature specifically uh, with your systemd files. So it's, it's a little bit more involved. Uh, for now, let's start off this demo by running our KDB Pro Server binary. We'll specify four server threads, and we're going to we're going to specify a Flash storage provider uh, to the directory we just made. Uh, for this demo, we're going to set a max memory policy of 500 megabytes, and we're going to disable RDB safe. As you can see, it uh, starts out with a two-hour demo, which is included with all of our uh, pro binaries. And if you need a longer development key, you can reach out to us for one. Uh, as you can see here, our, uh, we're running an empty database. So we will start by filling it. So here we're going to run use KDB benchmark to fill it. Uh, we're going to run 1 million set commands uh, with random in a randomized pattern uh, to get very close to that 1 million uh, keys. They all have a database, uh, a data size of 1024 bytes, and we're going to use four threads uh, to fill it. Uh, as you can see, when we started filling the database, uh, our memory filled up up to the 500 megabyte max memory uh, value we had set in. So once it reached that 500 megs, all of the data afterwards ends up getting written into Flash. So right now, everything that's being written is being written onto the Flash medium, up to our million keys. And uh, as mentioned before, we do have RPM packages and, uh, and uh, Docker files available. Uh, you, you can go to our website to get more information. If you haven't uh, set a max memory policy or uh, the max memory value, uh, it defaults to automatically to half the available RAM and to a least recently used policy. All right, so we're just about filled up here. All right, so we filled up the database. As you can see, the values, uh, uh, we've got almost a million keys in the database. So now if I kill the KDB server and start it back up, what you're gonna see is that all of our keys are still there, even though uh, the, the, the keys kept in, in the hot uh, memory have been removed. So everything is still there, even without an RDB file. So that being said, uh, I'm just going to review quickly how to set up the systemd server file. So we'll start out by uh, looking at the, the service file itself. And as you can see here, um, we are running a user and group of KDB. So in order to be able to access the data from the directory uh, we just made, we need to update it here in our D file. And now we can also uh, update uh, the flash configuration parameter in our uh, default config file. So all KDB specific features are located at the bottom of the kdb.conf config file. So here we'll just specify our directory. And the last thing that we have to do is to change the ownership for the directory we made uh, to the KDB user and group. All right, now that that's done, we should be able to run uh, as a service. And there are uh, a lot of instructions available on our uh, docs, so feel free to take a look if you have any, any further questions. And as you can see, we're up and running. Uh, with KDB Flash enabled for systemd files. So 
if you want to uh, keep up to date with KDB or, or follow us, uh, feel free to subscribe uh, on our website. And uh, thanks, thanks for joining us here today.